and what we are supposed to for God, what we are supposed to do for God and for people. Conference news. Uh, we are having a uh, new bishop, Bishop Dan Schuberlin. Uh, he is now serving Northern Illinois Conference. Our Wisconsin Conference and uh, Northern Illinois Conference will share him together. Uh, and our uh, current bishop, uh, He Su Jung, uh, he is going to Ohio Conference. So please pray for their new journey of Episcopal ministry. Any other announcement? No. Okay. to the presence of the Most High God with songs of praise and shouts of thanksgiving. You are a holy temple in the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, Come let us worship, worship God. God. Please join me in the opening prayer. Holy, holy Spirit, Spirit. Come and dwell in us. Place Jesus Christ in us so that he is the cornerstone holding us together and making us a sacred place where steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision, a circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us, abolishing the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile God to 
reconcile both to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So we came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God.
The Gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gesenaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Contemplating today's text, I recalled a song, Within You, Without You, written by George Harrison, a member of Beatles. Some parts of its lyrics are in, as follows. We were talking about the space between us all and the people who hide themselves behind the a world of illusion never grims the truth. We were talking about the love we all could share when we find it to try our best to hold it there with our love. With our love, we could save the world if they only knew. We were talking about the love that's gone so cold and the people who gained the world and lost their soul. They don't know. They can't see. Are you one of them? I was caught by two phrases of the song, people hide themselves behind a wall of illusion, and with our love, we could save the world. Yes, it is true that We do not want to know the truth about our human life because we are locked within a world of illusion. Then what is the reality of our human life? We could save the world with our love, but with what kind of love? 
Let us think about these questions through today's text. Jesus sent his disciples to the world, giving them his own authority so that they could proclaim the gospel to the people, teach people, heal the sick, expel the demons from the people who suffered by demons. Then they came back to Jesus. Jesus was concerned about his disciples' well-being because they were warned to build their mission in a degree that they had no time even to eat. So Jesus invited them to a retreat. However, people saw Jesus and his disciples going to the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a great crowd hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. Jesus had compassion for them because Jesus felt them sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus taught them about many things. Then Jesus and his disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee and arrived at the side of Gennesaret. However, there were more people waiting for Jesus. From all places, people rushed to Jesus, bringing the sick people on match. So people begged Jesus that they might touch it, even the fringe of his cloak. So the people who touched the fringe of Jesus' cloak were healed. How do you understand this story? First, let us focus on the reality of our human life. Gennesaret was on the western side of the Sea of Galilee. Gennesaret was the, the it was, Gennesaret was famous for its mineral springs, hot mineral springs. Many sick people visited those hot springs for healing. However, those springs were not helpful, helpful to people's fundamental healing. The perfect restoration of our brokenness is not from anything in this world, but only from God who wants our integral life. Yes, it is only from God through Jesus who has a special love for us. That was the reason people sought Jesus through hurry, through hurrying on foot and rushing to Jesus. That was the reason they begged Jesus to touch even the fringe of Jesus' cloak. What about you? As Christians, do we have an ardent passion to seek Jesus, Jesus' heart? We do not hurry on foot to go to Jesus. We do not rush to Jesus. We do not beg Jesus to touch even the fringe of Jesus' cloak for the restoration of our broken body, our broken soul, our broken relationship. Yes, we are so gentle because we do not know our human reality. But this does not mean that we have no desire to be made whole. It is because, as the song describes, we hide ourselves behind a wall of illusion. It is because we never glimpse the truth. In the book of Revelation, there was a warning against the church in Laodicea. They were neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm. lukewarm. They said, I am rich. I have prospered. And I need nothing. But the resurrected Jesus said to them, You do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Be earnest and repent. Yes, we hide ourselves behind a wall of illusion. If we really 
realize that our human life is broken, miserable, desperate, and that we are thirsty and hungry for the restoration, then we need to seek Jesus with an ardent passion. Let us reflect on another issue of love. Jesus taught people when he was weary, touched and healed people when he wanted to be alone, and fed people when he himself is hungry. Yes, it was because Jesus had compassion for people, filling them as sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd are destined to lose their way, to be hungry, and to die by fierce animals. At that time, there were many special religious people who were assigned to bear the law of a shepherd. But they did not seem to have compassion for the people. That was the reason Jesus felt that the people had no shepherd. It is also true in today's world that people do not have compassion for others. As Roger Campbell, Campbell said in his book, whether at the post office or the bank, a restaurant or the supermarket checkout line, checkout lane, everywhere you go, there is a Samaritan woman at the well and a jackass up a tree. Yes, in this world, people are thirsty and hungry for the restoration of their broken body their broken soul, and their broken relationship. After being discharged from my chaplaincy in Korean Air Force, I was appointed to a church in Seoul, Korea, a long time ago. The church was the largest church among all Methodist churches in the world. Its membership was 70,000, and the assigned people to me was 1,200 families. My main ministry was to visit about 8 to 10 families every day. My assigned area was in Korean name, Apujongdong and Sinsadong in Gangnam district in Seoul, Korea. You know the Gangnam, right? Oppa Gangnam style. You know the Gangnam, right? Okay. In that area at the time, the highest uh, classes of Korean society lived, such as uh, professors, deans of college, generals of army, the people of low circles, business owners, directors of big companies, and, and more. When I first visited them, I felt that I had nothing to do for them because they already enjoyed all sorts of privileges, privileges, uh, privileges in their wealth, power, fame, influence, and more in this world. However, I came to learn that they were also suffering from their brokenness in life. Delivering God's message, Prophet Ezekiel gave people hope. I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seek out their flocks, when they are among their scattered sheep, I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. Yes, God himself feeds the sheep, strengthens the weak, heals the sick, binds up the injured, bring, brings back the strayed, and seeks the lost. Yes, God wants us to live our restored, integral life. The song that I mentioned argues with our love, 
we could save the world. But the issue is what kind of love it is. As you know, it was very difficult for me to find my place before coming to our Hartford FUMC for my new ministry. I hope to buy a small house. However, in this seller market, I repeatedly failed to get a house. There was no guarantee for me to get my place. So I tried to find a rental. However, it was also impossible to get a rental because of my two dogs that I adopted a year ago and half a year ago. Until I adopted my two dogs, Rocky and Bucky, I did not know their dog breed. Later, their animal doctor uh, taught me about their dog breed. Rocky is a people mixed with a Rottweiler and a Boxer, and Bucky is a Dauberman mixed with a Labrador. People and Labrador, people and Dauberman are not allowed for any rental. I was desperate because buying a house or getting a rental was impossible. I was not able to sleep every night for two and a half months. Finally, I decided to let them go because my ministry is my first priority in my life, right? One day, looking at Rocky and Bucky, I burst into tears and cried because I saw my eyes from their eyes. Yes, my eyes filled with anxiety and despair in the days when I was in the most difficult situation in my life. Embracing Rocky and Bucky, I decided I will never abandon them that already experienced their abandonment by their previous owners and finally came to my bosom. I tried until the final moment. Finally, I was able to find my place. Only one place. Only one place was available. Graciously, it had a spacious backyard with a strong wood fence, wooden fence. After moving in, I said to my two dogs, Rocky and Bucky, live here fully in this place where there is no discrimination. There is no discrimination about your dog breed, your size, and your weight. Now I am happy to watch them running and playing with each other in the backyard. Jesus had compassion for people. As we know, well, to have compassion in its original biblical term, sprankonismai, means to feel one's own internal organs moving. Yes, Jesus' internal organs were moving when he saw people who were in predicament. So to have compassion is to suffer together with others for their pain. Yes, it is suffering love. When we were immature, we thought other sorts of love, for example, romantic love, were the only love. Precisely speaking, those love regards others as a means of satisfying our the want need, right? However, suffering love focuses on others give us oneself to others and embraces others in all life situations. Yes, if we have compassion for others, we are supposed to see 
ourselves from others and identify ourselves with others, especially with those who are in broken body, broken soul, and a broken relationship. Yes, only with this kind of love we can save this world. When the believers of the Corinthian church were divided to fight each other, Apostle Paul appealed to them saying, we have, sp we have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your heart also. Apostle Paul also, Apostle Paul also advised them to know that all things such as Paul, Peter, Apollos, this world, life, death, the present, or the future, all things, all things belong to them, and they belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. In a word, Apostle Paul admonished them to expand their heart toward others so that they could see themselves from others and identify themselves with others. Ephesians chapter 2, one of today's parallel text, declares that God's suffering love embodied in Jesus nullified the power of hatred which is the core of the power of death. Our true relationship with God became possible, and accordingly, our true relationship with others became possible. Wow, what a wonderful declaration it is. Without this suffering love of God, who suffers with us and heal our brokenness completely, we are destined to be Hopeless in this world that is filled with hatred, division, violence, oppression, and more. When I met Nedra, the chair of the worship committee, I was impressed by the meaning of her name. In Arabic origin, it means brightness. In its German origin, it means underground. Yes, even if the reality of our human life is dark, like an underground, we can be bright if we practice such suffering love for others. The granddaughter of Connie, our office secretary, will receive surgery to take off one of her kidneys in this week, Wednesday, so that her boyfriend can get it. She is just 24 year old, but she decided to save others' life. What a lofty love it is. Surely there are Christians who practice that kind of self-giving love. So today I bless you to see the reality of our human brokenness through coming out from the world of illusion. I bless you to save this world through practicing your love that is informed by God's suffering love, God's compassionate Love. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Above all, above all clothe yourselves 
with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Amen. Join me with in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for calling us when we had no hope and for crowning us with salvation. We thank you for enriching our lives with all that is good and for providing for us in times of trial. Make us ever more mindful of the blessings you grant us each day. Deepen our trust in your love and mercy. Increase our thanksgiving by guiding our offerings to help others in need. Unite us all in a community of thanksgiving, always glorifying you. Amen. Okay, it's time for Joyce and Concern. Anything do you want to share? Yeah.
Uh -huh. uh -huh. Many years ago, some of us worked closely with Dan as the founding pastor of the Stillwater Church in Jackson. Mm -hmm. So I was delighted to hear that he was coming. Mm -hmm. Name again? Lou. Lou. Luala. 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 Okay. Okay. More? Any other? <laughs> okay. Let us pray. Almighty God, empower us to see the reality of the brokenness of our human life in this world. We pray for the world. Jesus Christ came to save, rebuke forces of evil in this world, strengthen us to resist injustice and the sin of every kind and to break down the dividing walls between us. We pray for the victims of war and the other forms of violence. We pray for all who are weary from hard labor, especially for those who are not fairly paid, for those who work in dangerous places, for those trapped in slavery. Break yokes of oppression and the bonds of bitterness. We pray for the kingdom you are bringing through Jesus Christ. Bless the church, the body of Christ, and fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit. Reshape us to serve the needs of the present day and to be ready for the days ahead. Send us out to proclaim the good news that in Jesus Christ there is a new needs of life. Equip us with your compassionate love, your suffering love, so that we are able to see others' pain, suffer with them, expand ourselves toward them, and identify ourselves with them. Let us be good news for the people in our world and in our world and deed. Empower us to heal the brokenness in body, soul, and relationship. God of compassionate love and suffering love, we lift up our loving people in our heart, openly or silently. We pray for the sick and infirm and those who are spiritually hungry. Gracious God, you especially remember Luala and Connie's granddaughter and Kathy's relative who received surgery. We pray for our Bishop Hsu Jung, who have served our conference for last 12 years, and our new bishop, Dan Schubert. Bless them for their new Episcopal ministry. Strengthen them to live their ministerial life meaningfully and fruitfully. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The children of God, let us pray Lord's Prayer together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
So, do you know where to go and what to do? Yes. yes. We are going into the world to make disciples for Jesus and to transform this world. Wow, wonderful. precious people of God, go into the world with the power of Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>